All right, guys, Darkus here with Dolphin DC Creations. We are working on part three of the collab with Melody uh, from Making Memories with Melody. So today I'm actually going to be working on sewing in my signatures. And I'm also going to be making my faux spine. And we will then be adding some pockets and tuck spots to our book. So there's quite a bit to do. Um, before we get to the final final stages, so I'm just gonna take this out My daughter um, had seen the printables, but since I added all this other stuff to it She hasn't been allowed to see the book again, so I'm actually working on it when she's not around So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a faux spine using this piece of um, Cardboard this is from a box that got mailed to me from priority mail and so it's already doubled because it was sealed from you know when it was mailed to me so it's really nice and sturdy and it will give me a good rigid spine uh, faux spine to put in here so I'm gonna take these fellas out set them over here to the side on my ironing surface and then I'm gonna measure here and this is two inches by nine two by nine Two wide by nine tall. So I'm gonna go um, eight inches on the spine instead of nine, and I'm going to go one and one and a half, one and a half, or maybe one and three quarters, one and three quarters. So that's what I need to cut this at. First thing I'm going to do is let's cut this down to 8 inches. And you guys know how I love my rotary cutter. So let's grab my scissors. If you guys have not gone over to Melody's channel, um, go ahead and go to her channel and like and subscribe. Uh, and please, if you like this um, series, please like and subscribe um, to my channel as well. As you can hear, my voice is still a little rough. I have not gotten better from the cold. My son tried to kill me, gave me a cold. <coughs> so bear with me, and I apologize if I'm coughing. Um, I don't think I'm too congested. I was really congested at first. I'm a little better there. Oh, there we go. I'm like, why is this not measuring up? All right, and I went with eight to give it a half an inch gap at the top of the um, spine at the and at the bottom, so that I can put at the top and the bottom a um, an eyelet um, to hang something pretty, a charm of some sort. I'm gonna be. I think I I have a fairy um, sitting on the moon, and I think I'm gonna put that charm on there for her, and. We want this at, and the reason I keep moving it over and over is because I want to, uh, my, my camera, um, pole is right in the, in the way and I don't want to hit it. So if I cut it here, that actually gives me, leaves me a little, um, another little spine there of an inch and a half for another book. Because this is so nice and solid, I would want to keep as much of it as possible to use in some other projects. And I'm really liking these faux spines. I think they just work really well. So this is almost two inches, but we want it to be one and three fourths. And then I'm going to cover this with the same paper um, that I used on the inside of the book. And that's a, a piece of paper from Maggie Holmes collection, which I use quite a few pieces on in, inside of that journal. Gotta love Maggie Holmes papers. Her, her collections are beautiful and they all kind of match and can be mixed and matched with each other. Just, it's just like, you know, sometimes you, you have a favorite designer for me with fabric. I have a, several designers like Allison Glass, Tula Pink, Kefa Set, um, Jennifer Paginelli, 
Anna Maria Horner, those designers that I absolutely love and I can always find that anything that I buy from them from a previous collection I can intermingle with their new stuff. So this is my faux spine. Oh, and where and I cut, I cut the part that was glued, so I get it, I better glue it back together. Yep, <laughs> that's funny. Let's cut this back, to, let's put this back together. We are going to use the fabric tech. There we go. Oh my goodness, I hope this fabric tech doesn't give me grief today because my hands are really bad. They hurt so much. You see, it's going to give be a pain. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my pokey tool, my awl, and I'm going to poke the hole and try to make it bigger because my hands really, really hurt today and I cannot squeeze this bottle of glue. And I had made a, a smaller hole at the beginning because I didn't want a bunch of glue to glop out, but I kind of need that because my hands are so bad. The weather has turned here in Idaho and so... When that happens, my hands go south for the winter, but my body stays here. Okay, there we go. That's much better. Bigger hole allows for the glue to flow easier. Means I have to squeeze less. If anybody knows of a glue that comes, a, a, a glue brand that has this glue come in a similar type of glue in a different type of bottle that's maybe a little easier on the hands you don't have to squeeze it as much I am all ears I'd love to hear your suggestions because oh my goodness this is hurting there we go that's that's perfect so let's put this down all right Okay, so this is going to be my faux spine. I need paper. Let's grab my paper pad. I have a little shelf here with all with some of my papers that I am using more current more recently so that I don't have to dig through all of the stacks of paper which are on a shelf. There we go. This is the one we want. This one right here. We're just gonna cut, take it out of here. There we go. <coughs> okay. So I don't need a ton of this. I just need enough to cover this a little. So I'm guessing if I go, let's see, if I go about three inches, it should be enough. Maybe I'll go four inches. I'll go four inches. So we'll do four inches by, let's see, by how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine and a half. Well, I could go, I could go, um, nine. Yeah, nine would work. Nine would work. Now, the reason nine would work is because I would then have three inches left over that I could use for a little journal card. four inches over here. So one, two, three, and four. I want a bigger one of these rulers. Really love it. I finally changed the blade on my rotary cutter. I have so many blades that are dull from my sewing days and I put a new one in. Um, when I took the old one out, it had a little bit of rust on the back and everything. I was like, wow, it was definitely time. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and let's go here. Measure eight. Cut it eight. No, nope, we're going to cut it nine out of eight. Because we want that extra half inch to overlap. 
uh, on the back. You'll see what I mean in just a sec. Oh, I'm being a good girl, I'm closing it and everything. Wow. Okay. So if I put it here, we just want to make sure that this will fold down. And for that, there's a thing that I'm going to do. I'm just going to glue this down first to begin with. And then I'm going to cut the sides to suit what I need. And I'll show you what I mean here. Okay. Happy gluing. Happy gluing. There we go. Okay. So I don't know how often you participate in swaps, but if you have the chance to participate in a swap where you are swapping um, with other um, junk journalers of all levels, um, you know, when, you're, when you join a swap like that where you're um, swapping with people that are advanced and people that are intermediate and people that are beginners, you know your expectation is not to get a fantastic, fabulous, perfect journal. But if you are new, do not be intimidated by the fact that the other people that might be, you might be swapping with are more experienced than you. That, that's my point. Um, because you the, there's such a wonderful value in learning from people that are more experienced than you. When I started junk journaling, I actually dived it head first into a couple of swaps. And, and the reason I did was because of the subject matter. Um, one of the swaps, the very first swap I did was for a full journal. And it was a mermaid journal. And I didn't even know about the copyright stuff. And I got some images that were probably not copyright free. Um, but I didn't know any better at the time. But I will tell you what, the journal and the journal that I sent out was not fancy in the least. But what I got back was a journal that was absolutely beautiful. Um, so much attention to detail from my swap partner. And I learned so much. There wasn't a single page in her journal that was blank. She took all of her pages and she did something to it. Whether it was coffee, stain them or ink them or whatever it was every page had something and that is something that I learned from my very first swap partner and so I wasn't very experienced it was my very first journal and I had just found out about junk journaling I was I was enthralled by the whole idea of junk journaling and I didn't know anything anything whatsoever and I went ahead and I joined that swap anyways and it was the best experience. And I, I let her know. I said, listen, I don't know very much about this whole thing. But I just, I really wanted to join this because it was a, a mermaid journal swap. And and she was like, no worries. Boy, she sent me a beautiful, beautiful journal that I have. And I don't even dare write in it, to be quite honest, because it's so pretty. Um, but I do use it a lot of times for inspiration for when I'm working on other things. Like I, she had so many techniques in there that I absolutely love. I even, she even had some shakers and I used shakers in my um, Adventure C journal. And it was, you know, watching the construction of hers, taking a look at the construction of her shakers that I, you know, was able to make mine because that was the first time I actually made a shaker. And so um, there's a lot of value, like I said, in, in learning from others. And so joining those swaps, um, aside from the videos and the YouTube tutorials, I think it's very important having those different types of, um, of items in your hand and touching them and dissecting them. And I mean, I think it's pretty fantastic. So, you know, take advantage of those opportunities to join a full journal swap when you can it, it don't feel intimidated you will learn so much and everybody is very nice in the junk journal community i don't think you have to worry too much about oh she said my journal wasn't pretty enough or anything like that i've, I've never had that happen um 
even when I was sending out some journals at first that I was like, man, I got something so fabulous back. I don't deserve it. But it's all part of your learning curve. And don't, you know, don't, don't be intimidated by other people's work. I, I just did a, a swap recently and my swap partner, I had published some uh, journals of hers um, and flip throughs and they were so absolutely gorgeous. And I was like, oh man, I'm sending her this journal and I don't know if this journal is good enough because she is so talented and I was very, very intimidated by her work. And then, so when I sent it to her, she was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And she sent me a message. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad you like it because I was so worried because your work is so awesome. And she's like, man, I was thinking the same thing about yours. And I was like, you know, you got to laugh. You got to laugh because it's ridiculous how critical we are of ourselves when others are not nearly as critical of our work as we are. So... And I, I was, I was rather proud of the book when I finished it, but then I saw her work and I'm like, oh, I don't know. She's so good. And she was, she was thinking the same thing about me, which is hilarious. You know, if you're doing something with love and out of joy, um, your results are always going to be good in my mind, but that's my own personal thought on the matter. You know, this is something we do because we want to do it. We don't, we're not forced to. It's, it's, you know, it's a fun thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish wrapping this. As you can see, I cut those um, pieces at an angle to get this. And this part will be facing the um, inner spine, so you won't see this. So I don't, I'm not nearly as worried about this seam being perfect, although it looks pretty decent. Um, four inches was actually the perfect amount of, uh, of cardstock to use for the width. And I am using Fabri-Tac because Fabri-Tac dries, dries rather quickly. Um, I am switching back and forth between my um, Tacky Glue and Fabri-Tac. I was a Tacky Glue girl for a very long time, and then Melody uh, corrupted me by sending me a bottle of Helmer's uh, 450 and I loved it and so that's why I started using Fabri-Tac because it's a similar glue to the Helmer's but I can get it anywhere and the Helmer's you have to kind of order online and it's a little more spendy although really that Fabri-Tac is not cheap So this is my faux spine. I'm just going to leave it alone for a little bit for it to dry. And once it dries, then we are going to poke some holes. I'm going to grab a piece of paper. Um, I ordered some new paper. Um, it's funny because uh, Chris um, was, uh, and I don't want to butcher your name, Chris, Cool you can? posted in the junk journal newbie junk journal makers about the paper that she's using and I had just been using regular copy paper um, I had found a good deal on it at Walmart one time when I went and so I started using the HP which is what my printer is and so I was like okay let's throw some HP paper on there uh, although I was happy to use the cheaper paper before and so I just purchased a ream of the premium uh, copy paper, uh, the hammer mill, uh, cause Chris suggested that that was a very good paper for her. So I just got it here in the mail yesterday and I'm printing out some stuff with it right now. I'm dying to see what, it, what it feels like. I did test it to do some sketching. I got a new, um, dip, uh, fountain pen and I don't even know where, oh, right here. I got this new dip fountain pen. I'm just waiting for that to dry. And this one comes with like some um, sketching nibs. And then this one is like calligraphy-ish. And so this one came with two pens. 
and 10 nibs that are for like drawing and I didn't realize that's what they were until I got them and then I started doing some research. It's my bad because it was only like 19 bucks and I was like, hey, that's no big deal. And it came with this pen and another one like this. My son, I gave my son one and I, these are, these are Techikawa pens and these are Techikawa Zebra G nibs. They're supposed to be fancy dancy. I don't know no better yet, but I was playing with them and I did some sketching and some, don't look at what I wrote because I wrote nonsense, honestly. It's ridiculous. I'm just, yeah. So this is some sketching that I did with it. I really like how this turned out and it's, um, I used some purple, um, India ink to draw. It almost looks black, but all of it is really just dark purple. Um, and I did a little bit of watercolor over the top. This watercolor that I used here was very runny and I had washed it out a little bit and it looks better that way than any of these other ones. But I also have some gold China ink and, or India ink. And I really, really like this. And this is going in my daughter's journal. Um, and so I'm going to ink the edges and glue it down somewhere because it was like my first attempt and it turned out pretty decent. And I don't know how to draw, to be quite honest, but this is pretty cool. And then this one also is going in her journal. So I've been playing with that. <coughs> and I'll be playing with it some more, and I'll show you guys later on what I figure out how to make with those. Okay, so I just need to grab a piece of paper to uh, measure this and the, the holes that I need to make. Um, I'm going to pause here. I'm going to just go grab some paper and I'll be right back. Okay, cool. So we have got my piece of faux, um, what should I call it? My faux spine here. Um, I am going to um, secure these down with a pamphlet stitch. So I'm just going to plate this, this here in the middle. For me <clears throat> and then I'm gonna use my ruler to help me figure out where the center signature goes and I can mark this out with paper and that's what I was gonna I was looking for a piece of paper to do it on but I don't need to um, I could just poke it right here um, it's no big deal okay so So right here's the new. Okay, and there's my first hole. And I'm just gonna do a three pamphlet stitch. So a little bit of glue came up. And then oh. okay. I see it. Okay, so I've got one there, and that's the center, and so I guess the other one needs to go right about here. And the other one needs to go right about here. And I'm just spacing them out about half an inch apart. I really just eyeballed this, guys. Um, the one I was concerned about the most is the middle one. And so I'm concerned about where they are as far as height. And the same thing with this, because I am going to need three holes up here. <coughs> Sorry. Because I'm going to need three holes up here for my um, signature to be affixed to the cover. Um, I don't want that my next holes going up the, the chain are too far up. So I'm just going to go about to this line. And I am going to use the ruler again. And the reason I'm using the ruler is so that I can determine the middle easier. And once I've got it in the middle, then I'm good. Oh, there we go. I moved everything. Everything is awesome. Okay. Oh, come on. There we go. So I'm going to put one about there. About there, 
and one about here. And then I'm also going to put one around here. Around there. And around here. Okay. So this hole here is the one for my actual signatures to be stuck into. This one is the hole that I'm going to need to sew it onto my book. And then the same thing on this side. So what happens is that in the book you will see that I will end up with um, some stitching at the very top and some stitching at the very bottom of the spine, but nothing going down all the way through the spine. I hope that makes perfect sense. Okay, so we're going to do another one here. My signature sewing and another one here. And the same thing with this one up here. I'm going to do one here. And we're going to do one up here. And then with these, we're doing about half an inch apart. And then I just take my awl and I make those holes big enough for my needle to go through. I have a big fat yarn needle that I use. And I'm on like my fourth one because I keep losing the stinking needles. I am trying to be so careful with this one so it doesn't get lost. Because I had a lot of yarn needles. I am a crochet and a knitter. So I had tons of them, and I can tell you that I had to have my friend give me one of hers because I lost mine. So if it wasn't for my friend Tennille, who does not have anything to do with junk journals, but is willing to supply the addiction. So. There we go. Okay. So my uh, faux spine is ready, um, and my signatures are almost ready. I do need a piece of paper because I need to measure where I stuck, uh, where I put these, so that I can use it for my um, to tell my signatures where my holes are. I just realized that I almost didn't have anything for that, um, but I am just going to use my scissors to cut this piece of paper out to the exact measurements of this. There we go. So my handwriting is atrocious as anyone can attest that has received happy mail from me. That's why I usually don't put much of a note except I hope you enjoy this because my handwriting is bad. Not at a lack of trying because my mom used to make me do all the writing exercises when I was like in fifth and sixth grade. It was torture, which is probably why I don't really like writing. Um, or I like writing, I just think it's ugly. And my writing is usually pretty atrocious. So I, um, she bought me a set of calligraphy pens when I was like in middle school or high school. And I used them a little bit sparingly, just so that I could say that I did try them out. Um, however, I do like fountain pens. And my ex-husband and I were always, even when we were in high school, we were always, uh, because even though we were kids, we always worked. We were trading fountain pens back and forth for the longest time. It was like a little courting ritual that was very cute at the time. Um, and so I have, um, I really, I really love fountain pens. And I hadn't, I haven't had one in years since I split up from him. Um, because of course they bring back unhappy memories, but who cares? It's been years. So I um, went ahead and I tried the dip pens, the dip calligraphy pens, um, and I bought myself a little kit and I tried it out uh, a few weeks ago and I had had it for almost six months because I'm bad. And so I tried it out and I really did fall in love with it all over again. Then I watched a couple of videos and I you know, 
ordered a nicer set and then gave my set to my son. And so it turns out that I am doing calligraphy. Not calligraphy, just handwriting practice, to be quite honest. I, I can't claim calligraphy. That's just too fancy. Okay, let's open up this signature so we can sew it down. And this is the center. Yes, it is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these little binder clips right here in between the lace and ruffles. And if my lace and ruffles gets pinched, not a big whoop, um, it'll be fine. But I am doing this because I want this to come out nice. And you kind of have to pinch it at least a little when you're going to poke your pages so that you don't make a mess. Okay, so hole number one. Number two, and then up here will be hole number three. Okay, those are good. Now, let me grab my needle. Look, I'm being good. I'm telling you, I'm keeping these babies like they are priceless or medicine. There we go. Oh, just the one. This is how I lose them, guys. This is how I lose them. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. I am going to use oh, that natural fiber that I have. It is brown. And it, in my mind, it kind of is too dark for the outside of this journal. But I think it's the best idea. Unless I use the white one. Or the green one. What do you guys think? Let's try it out on the outside. Let's audition it. Oh, yeah. The green one's the one that's going to go. Oh, it won't be showing on the outside. So it doesn't really matter. The only ones that will show are the ones at the top and the bottom. So we can set that aside to do the top and the bottom. But for the inside, I can use this one that I have a ton of because I have a spool of it. Bam. We're going to use that for the inside. There we go. Although my little danglies at the bottom out here will show, and I don't want them to show brown. Let's go with the cream. Lots of decisions. Lots of decisions. <laughs> we'll use this cream one here, which is a mess and tangled. Yay, me! I know how to make a mess. Oh, here's the beginning, though. Ha <laughs> ha! Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Okay. I don't know why I'm keeping these little tails in this block baggie. Don't know, guys. It might end up in a snippet roll. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just go ahead and two times the length of your signature. That's how much yarn you need. And I know that I'm going to leave some tails because I want to do some danglies at the bottom. So I will cut a little extra. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, there we are. Let's push that over to the side over there so we can grab it again later and let's sew this one in I don't need my book cover right now because I'm not sewing it into the book cover I'm sewing it onto this faux spine so and I want to make sure I start from the inside of the signature if you were sewing this onto the spine and you wanted your um, your pieces of string to be on the outside so you could dangle things from it on the outside then you'd start it from the outside and in but because, oh no, this is not the middle signature. Lordy Lord, let's pull this out. Okay. But because I want this to be, um, I want this, this is a faux spine and this will be 
on the inside of the book cover, I am going to start it from the center so I can have my bead danglies be in the center. I hope that made sense. Oh, look, it's looped around that. <laughs> There's a fly. I've, I had the back door open because it was nice and warm outside this morning while it was freezing in my house. And so I opened the back door and now a fly wants to kiss me. here. No longer for me. And I'm just adjusting this because I want a longer tail so that I can tie the danglings from. I think that's about what I measured when I cut the, paper, the string. Now this goes through here. It's funny because even though they're clipped, the hole doesn't stay exact. There we go. There we are. So as you can see, this will have a nice amount of dangly at the bottom in this signature. There we go. And I'm just going to do a knot here. And then I do a double knot on the second, where I twist the around it twice. And then I'll do one more. And I usually like to keep my finger there till the very last minute, so it'll stay. And I broke it. That is fantastic. Oh, I'm not happy with that. I'll fix it later. I'll fix it later. I'll move on for now, and then I'll fix it later. Okay. Kind of sad about that. I pulled too hard. Okay. Let's work on the next signature, which is the center signature. And look, it, I've already got the salt paper clip down. I'm a good girl, at least on this one. And where is my all? Oh, I know I knocked it down somewhere. Oh, come on. Oh no, look, it's right here. And here's my little piece telling me where to put things. There we are. Okay. That might be a very big hole. Might have gone too big there. some more thread. Where did I put my needle? Right here. And once again, we're just going to make sure that we have twice the length, plus the little piece that I like to leave for the dangling. stuck my finger in my mouth to do that but I just I don't know I don't know if it's a bad habit from sewing 
I just feel it helps keep the fibers together so they'll go through the needle, through the eye. Shoe fly don't bother me. Okay, let's sew this one in next. And this one has that veil in the middle. And we're just gonna go in here. And I'm gonna make sure that I actually leave the tail so I don't have to readjust it like I had to do with the other one. You know, for some reason, I have that ridiculous song from Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Dim Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, in my head, and I've been singing it this whole time without y'all knowing it. I can't sing, and I barely have a voice anyhow, so you will not get a demo, but just know that in my head, that's the song that's going on. is no I don't pull so much it did it anyhow oh come on be nice to me okay that's better and we go up and in. Totally pulling on the wrong thing. Okay. And then the next one up here goes in through there. Whoa, that went in like butter. Perfect, so nice and smooth. Okay. And we're done. Let's sew this down. Let me make sure we don't lose a needle. Because I will lose a needle for sure. Okay. I am not going to pull as tight when I tie this one because I already had a mishap last time. So gonna pull a little less tight and hopefully my string will not break there we go one and two and tie okay there we go we've got that one and then we just have one more signature Last signature. Oh, doo doo. Oh no. Oh no. Guess what, guys? I have four signatures, not three. Oh boy, oh boy. Can I smush in two extra signatures? No, this stinks. Ugh. I won't be able to get another signature in there. Shoot. Okay. So I have to... Oh, this is going to hurt. I have to cut this, them out. I have to cut them out. Oh, this hurts so much. Well, I guess I'm kind of glad that this is on the full spine and that these are not all crazy holes that I had to dig into my 
beautiful pristine cover so another reason to do a faux spine in my mind because oh this would have hurt so much <clears throat> if this was going into my actual signature into my actual book cover this would have hurt so much more All right, guys, because I made such a ginormi mistake, I had to go in and redo the signatures, but I'm going to just kind of fast forward through this um, because I really felt bad about this whole thing. Um, and this video is already super long um, without counting this ginormous mistake right here in the middle. So I am going to go ahead and fast forward through all of this. I'll play you a little song, a little ditty, um, but I apologize this was uh, pretty bad. All right. I went ahead and I just deleted that whole portion of me re-sewing the signatures back in. So as you can see, we have a block with all the signatures sewn onto it. And we're going to put this in the book. You could probably glue this into the book and it would probably be okay. But I am not 100% trusting of that. So I am going to use these top holes and these bottom holes to sew it into my book. And here is my book. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay down my little measuring thing that I made. Oh, no, this won't help me, will it? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Dude, here's another mistake I made. But I know how to fix it. I'm sure you can guess what the mistake is already. I didn't mark these holes before. I put the... the signatures in. But fortunately, I can mark them now. Sort of. Maybe, perhaps. Oh, come on. Be nice to me. Even if I Swiss cheesed you. Be nice. Okay, there we go. Alright. That's marked. Let's mark the ones up here. Wow. I have to poke from this side. 
I usually like to poke from the other side if I'm poking on paper. And the reason I like to do that is because I don't like the cardstock looking puffed out. So I'll usually poke from the outside towards the in um, so that my cardstock doesn't look all poofed out. But in this case, because it's fabric, it won't be as noticeable or as bad. So I'm okay to poke it this way. Okay. All right. So that looks good. Remember, we're going to have, I'm going to use the screen one. And it's not going to be, I don't even think I need this much. It's probably a lot less. Just need my needle that I tossed when I was done. <laughs> of course, I lost it. Because if anything could go wrong, it has gone wrong, hasn't it? There it is. Wow, pessimistic much. Yeah, I totally flattened that. Because I want to use it. Even if it doesn't want to go through there. Okay. I think this is enough for both for the top and the bottom. I'm going to put that back in its box, put that back in its Ziploc, and get it out of my life. Okay. Let me take a look here. Bring that down. Okay. So this is my top, and I am going to let this show on the outside let's see so i am going to sew it up here and we're going to suspend the signature from there oh, you can see that okay so this is number one stitch and Number two is the next one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew, go from the center towards the back signature, the back cover, and I'm going to sew that one, that side in first, and then I will sew in the front because I want my knot, because I'm leaving this knot visible on the outside, I want this knot to be more towards the front so that if I dangle something it'll show up pretty. Let's see. I don't think I need it to be that long though. I think short is better. Yeah. A little longer than the book for sure. And let me leave some space for the knot. Okay. And then I'm going to go back in here. The same as a pamphlet stitch, just sideways. And that will hold this signature in place for me. Okay. There we go. Oh, come on. So I'm just gonna pull this over because I don't want I don't like it going having it go through the thread itself. But it is annoying as all get out to get it to go back. There we go, hold on.
gonna do the same over here. And this will pull right under the signature and not interfere with it in any way, shape, or form. And it comes right out there. And this is where we're gonna tie it. Okay, so we're gonna tie it out here. Now this little piece of my batting came out. And I think this is probably where I'm gonna hang that mermaid charm or dangle or whatever, or maybe a little higher. Not sure yet, not 100% sure. But I did want these to be on the outside and not on the inside. Okay, so I knew that I wanted that one long. I don't necessarily need the bottom one as long, but, oh, sorry, camera. I hope this thing is up high enough where you guys are getting a good view. I'm gonna have to double check here in a sec. Operate. This is probably way thicker than I should be putting in this needle, but I've already made up my mind. There we are. Nope, we are not there. Oh my goodness, let's cut off a piece. Let's cut it off at a slant and see if that will go in better. Nope. It's gonna give me grief. Okay, perfect. Got it to go through. That's all I need. Yikes, it's a mess down here. Where am I going to find the center? Not the center, but the center. Yep, yeah, right here. Okay. Sometimes you just need a pair of pliers to pull out your needle. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, there we go. One of the other parts got tangled in there. I don't need very long tail on this one because the top one has a long tail and down here at the bottom I have all these other ones that are dangling already. So I don't want this one to have a very long tail. And as a matter of fact, I don't even think I want this one tying on the outside. I think I want this one tying on the inside. So let's do that instead. Let's tie this one on the inside. Um, because I don't want this one to show. We already have the other one for pretties and then all the beads that are going to be dangling from the bottom over here. 
so no need. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we are almost done uh, sewing these signatures in, and I am going to go ahead and finish here. So you can see my needle sticking out. Um, my camera timed out because it does like 30 minutes at a time for some reason because it's myself oh no I pulled it through all the way ah <laughs> it is just one of those days guys oh, here we go let's try that again oh that is hilarious this is the signature that won't sew in <laughs> I'm leaving a piece in there so I can use it to tie it. Let's make sure I don't pull it all the way through just like I did a second ago. There we go. And we're going to sew it into the back towards the cover first and then in the front. Let's see if we can. There we go. too hard and have it come up the other side. Okay. So we're gonna sew this back behind here. Just gonna open it up and put it back back there. And we're gonna put it right back in that first hole. It's pulling through. Boy, this lace sure gets in the way of doing this. But it's so pretty. Okay. And that one is right here. There we go. Okay, that is done. Let's take this needle and put it away so I don't lose it because I have problems with that. And then let's put it in my desk drawer. All right. So now I just need to pull this back towards the middle so that it's under here. And I'm gonna pull the little tails from that signature to the side. And make it look more difficult than it really is. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to tie this here. I don't necessarily need this to have long tails, although there will be a little bit of a tail here in between the signatures, but I don't need this to have long tails because I don't want it. And I'm just going to do one more knot to make me happy just in case. Okay, here we go. There we are. And I will cut it here and leave those hiding back down here. And you won't even see them once the book is put together. So let's straighten out my signatures because now some of them look like they've been put through the ringer because some savage 
you know, did bad things to him. Okay. So we have our signatures, our danglies. Let's pull these guys down. Make sure they're showing. Okay. So here we go. That doesn't, that's not even attached. And this I need to um, glue down in here. I might use some double sided tape and glue this down in here. The ones on that side, yeah, the ones on this side. <coughs> okay. So we have a book with signatures sewn in. We are mostly done. And as you can see over here, the um, what we did is very mini minimally intrusive. You're still, you still have them sewn in so that, you know, they're nice and secured, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't like ugly this up. <laughs> it's my thought. Um, I had, I was going to put two flowers on the front over here, but once I put the fairy, um, down, I thought it didn't look good. So I went ahead and I put her back here just as a little afterthought, which I thought was kind of cute, even if I do say so myself. So let's go ahead and let's put this down in here. There we go. That's down in there. And it looks like we have a, a, a large space up here. Um, but I'm st I still have some tabs to put in and some um, altered paper clips. So this will fill up. And the bottom is full because of all the different um, because of all the different laces that are trimming. Um, and the same thing with uh, on the sides. It looks like it's overflowing. Um, it's not really the paper. I cut the paper almost half an inch um, shorter than my um, book cover, but because of all the lace drippings, um, it looks like it's, um, you know, that like the signatures are bigger. Um, as you can see, the faux spine looks really good. Um, you can't tell all the mistakes I made on it. Thank goodness. Um, you could probably tell if you looked in between the signatures, but shame on you if you do. <clears throat> so this is all set. The next step is working with all of my ephemera that I have already cut out um, and it's actually all ready to go here but I am this is gonna be for the next uh, time because sewing these signatures in did take me a very long time because I made so many mistakes so um, here's my ephemera I've got some t uh, tuck spots um, I cut out the tabs I even cut out the p pieces of like washi trim that were in the kit and I am going to be adding that to some other pages as decorations um, as well as all the envelopes and pockets and all the things that are included with the kit all right guys so I hope that you enjoyed this portion today I'm gonna have to do some serious editing to clean this up because this video is super long and super complicated but um we'll move on uh the next part should go quite a bit quicker since we've already spent so much time on decorating the inside already so all right guys we have a book i'm still unsure about what i'm going to do for the closure i am pretty sure that it's going to be some sari silk i just don't know how i'm going to attach it um, because I don't necessarily want to perforate a hole on this signature here. So we'll see when we get uh, a little closer towards the end. All right, guys. Bye. I did almost forget. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also don't forget to check out Melody's, um, channel, uh, Making Memories with Melody. Um, and like and subscribe to her channel as well. Um, she's already got her part three up. It premiered on Friday. And so I hope you guys enjoy this and have a wonderful day. Bye.